Welcome back to another episode of Music Production School Online, which are quick tips and tutorials to make your music sound better. For this specific Ableton tutorial, I'm just going to do a full-on EQing tutorial. EQing is incredibly important when it comes to making music, and not only is it just imperative for mixing, but for mastering. Basically, it's a huge staple in music production. So I have my track loaded up right here called DDR. It's basically like an acid house style um, record. I'll show you like a little bit of it. I know some shameless self-promotion, so it sounds kind of like this. Right, so you pretty much get the idea. Now, first off, in terms of loading up EQ, I'm gonna go to Audio Effects, I'm gonna click EQ8. Now, I know in the beginning, when it comes to Ableton, there's two EQs, EQ8 and EQ3, always choose eight for numerous different reasons. I honestly don't know any big producers who've ever used EQ3. I honestly don't, I don't know why it's still a thing in Ableton, but anyway. So when loaded up, it's gonna look like this, right? Now as you can see, I can have basically eight different points and I have all these settings right here. And they basically sum it up EQ, and I'm gonna solo this, right? Cause I'm actually EQing this specific MIDI track right here. Remember you can use EQ for MIDI or for samples. All the EQ does is basically allow you to basically remove or add different parts of the EQ spectrum or basically different frequencies. I'm wearing that kind of simple, but basically to be more specific, if you notice, right? Now I'm gonna play this. Now this is the full EQ spectrum of what you're listening to, right? So to show you a little bit, so now I'm gonna start with basically one. So I'm gonna take all these off, right? So if you notice, I can add or remove different points on it. And just to kind of show you, I'm actually gonna, yeah, I'll leave that here. So if you notice, if I click and drag, I can move it around. Actually, I'm gonna uh, do that one. So if you notice, I can, I can add high end or low end, right? So I can add these different frequencies or remove them. So a big thing when you're doing EQing and music production is you're trying to figure out when it comes to, for example, this specific sound, whether it's a sample or MIDI, whatever the case is, what do I want to add or maybe enhance or boost? And also what do I want to remove? I think a good analogy I like to use for a lot of people, especially beginning music producers, is look at any element in your track almost like a puzzle piece. And in some cases, you want maybe to add a little bit more to that puzzle piece to fit into everything, but other cases you don't. So a big example, and this is what EQ is used a lot, and it's pretty much a staple, especially for any type of synth, is when it comes to a full master of a song, obviously you have an EQ on it as well, whether you have like a certain spectrum on it from low to high. And if you think about it, for a song like this, right, I'm gonna play it again. All right. I am looking, when I look at the bass, where's my bass here? It's, I have a bunch of stuff going on here, but if you notice, I have basically, these basically bases going on here, so I have a kick and I have basically this like Moomaton sub I actually got from Splice. So that's basically taking up the low end. Now when it comes to this synth, going all the way back up again, when it comes to the synth, I don't really care about the low end being a part of it. So a big thing a lot of producers do, and this is pretty much a staple, is do something what's called low cutting or high passing tomato tomato. You can use either one. So essentially what I'm doing, if I kind of play this again, I'm gonna show this. If you notice, this part right here, I don't really care for, right? In this spectrum or this part of the song, in terms of the full EQ for the whole master, right? I want to let this be mainly that sub that I have, that kind of Moomaton sub, even though I'm using it on a faster song, and the kick. That should take up this kind of arena or area in the song. So if I have this playing and I have the base of this playing, it's gonna conflict a little bit, right? So I'm gonna kind of remove that because I'm like, you know what? I don't really need to have this kind of very aggressive low end on this because this is gonna be for the bass and for the kick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maybe start here and go up to like, so also that's too much, right? So I'd probably go like there, right? I can even do this sort of like that, right? So that's one example. So now this kind of area is not being taken up by the synth. And if you think about it, like I said, this kind of acid synth, I would never want the bass in one of my songs, right? Like the bass or this kind of low end should come from the kick, right? So if you notice, even if I bring up my master, throw this EQ on it, so this is now the master of the, the EQ of the whole uh, song. If I do this, you're just hearing the Moomaton sub and the kick, right? Because that's the most thing that matters. Now as I drag it more, I hear all the other elements. All right. So that's the main first thing when it comes to EQ. And again, I'm kind of making this video as simple as possible. So that's the first thing we do with EQing is, is basically take out or cut out the certain parts of each sample in each synth or vocal or whatever the case is that you feel like should not be in your track. So for example, if let's say this was a sub bass, right? I'm just gonna give you an example. What I might do 
is I might do this. I might do that because I'm like, you know what? For sub bass, I don't care about the high end or even the mid. I only care about the low end. So it might be like this. Right, it might be that, that obviously you can't really hear that much because obviously right now I'm doing it here, but that's actually super, super helpful that if I say I don't want the high end and like say it's like a heavy, heavy sub, I might cut this out. So that's a big element that people do with EQing. Now, another element is they might boost it a little bit. So for example, let's say I'm playing this. I'm just gonna take this one off. And as you can see, there's different EQ types. I'm gonna get that in a little bit. I'm sure i get to that now because it kind of relates. So I have this going. So I'm gonna select one of these so I can adjust, right? So I have low cutting. Um, I then have a shelf. I have a bell, and then I have a notch, and then I have another shelf on the high end, and then high cut, and high cut, times four basically makes it a more aggressive, as you can see, curvature. So on this one, let's say I'm, uh, I'm just gonna do this, okay. So let's say I'm like, you know what? For this acid song, I really, I like the acid-y sound, right? Like, obviously that's like the point of the song. So, cause obviously it's like an old school DDR song that I was working on. So I'm like, you know what? I really like this part. So I'm first gonna do this. Right? Because I don't really want that. I should make this four, right? So I'm gonna do it as four octaves. So I'm gonna uh I'm gonna add excuse me, I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna add another one. Right? So now I'm gonna start again, except see where that kind of peak was? I'm like, you know what, maybe I like where that peak is. So I can do this now. Right, so now you're hearing that acid sound more. Or let's say like, you know what? That's kind of already high. I want that high end to come in so I can do this. So you hear that kind of high end, right? Turning it off, turning it back on. Right, so that's why when you see sometimes, you know, experienced producers when they're EQing, they might have a bunch of stuff. I keep uh, making that. You can make it bigger like that. Um, but so I could do basically something like here. And then this is why when you're looking at a lot of advanced producers, they might even do, let's make this like, uh, let's bring this here. And they might, do something along these lines, right? Where they're basically doing something like that. And the idea is that basically they're removing and adding different parts of the spectrum that they think complement not only the sample or the sound itself, but how it basically relates to the rest of the track. Now, as you notice with number four, you know, again, now I'm gonna get to the more specifics of EQing. I want to more give you EQ theory in the beginning and then kind of get there. So I'm gonna use a bell, right? As you can see like this. So now I have a few different settings. Frequency is where it appears here. Now I can either drag and move it around as you can see, or I can adjust them here. Now gain is basically how much, right? So let's say if I do this, you notice I'm reducing this area by negative 0.57 decibels. And then let's see, I have the Q. So this is basically how, I guess, tightened or loose it is. So if you notice, let's say I'm like, oh, this is, and this is what you will typically do. Uh, I'm actually just gonna show you. So when I click this headphones, I know I'm kind of matching around a little bit, but it will all relate. The headphones will only allow me to listen to whatever is in this space right here. So if I do this, right? Doesn't sound that different. So if I do this, now if you notice, I'm only hearing what is within here, right? When I click it, it turns blue. So what a lot of producers would do is let's say I wanna remove a sound, like I told you with EQing, you're basically removing or adding something to the spectrum. Let's say I'm like, oh, this is one sound. This happens a lot with like vocals. Let's say this one has some sharp elements. If I do this, right? So I'm just gonna play it now. Like right there. Like so I'm like, eh, that's a little sharp to the ear, right? So what I might do is I might go here. I might adjust the Q because I don't want to be like that, right? That doesn't sound good. So I'm going to adjust the Q to make it more specific, more tightened. And then go back to here. I'll just do that, I guess. So I'm going to maybe leave it there, right? So now that kind of, that really aggressive high end is now just removed just a little bit, right? Just to make it more sonically pleasing to the ear. One big pro tip is when you're looking at the whole spectrum, you want this to be kind of as flat as possible for the most part, right? Especially on the master, I guess is more important that it's as flat as possible or closer to this as possible. Now, there's obviously different ways to have an overall post EQ of your track. As you can imagine, some people want this bass or the low end higher because it's all about the bass right now. It's all about having some hard hitting bass, especially for those big concert stacks. But for most pop and most radio friendly sound music, you're gonna notice that this EQ spectrum is pretty flat or pretty neutral, if that makes sense. Now, one last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to EQing. Again, I'm kind of giving you, this meant to be like a beginner's guide, but I didn't want to kind of explain, again, one, the theory of EQing to the kind of technicalities of EQing. The third thing I wanna show you is basically mid side. Now, 
this can get a little annoying, but also here I have left and right. I don't really touch LNR unless you want to do some very specific. I don't think this is necessary, but the last one is MS. Now, mid size basically, if I do this. Now, what I'm essentially doing is when you think of any speaker or, or any sound or, or situation, you basically have the center and then you have the side. So, for example, if I do this, I'm just going to actually do this. So, this is now I'm EQing just the side. So, I can go back and forth between mid and side. And if you notice, there's two different EQs I have here. So, let's say I do this. You notice there's nothing on, like, the side of the speakers. Right? So, I'm going to do this now showing you if I remove the mid. It just kind of like the sides. So this is a big thing that a lot of people do, and I've already done this on my master train, but I'll just show you specifically. So I'm gonna do this. So what typically you do, I'm just gonna give you one example when it comes to mid-side EQing, which is a specific type of EQing, is typically on your master chain, you don't want your bass to be on the sides. It doesn't really make sense of like the speakers, and I think that's a good way to kind of think of it, is like the sides versus the mid in terms of the whole stereo width of the song. So what I typically do is actually I have this playing, I'm going to do that, and then, so essentially what's happening here on the master chain is all that kind of low end, like the kicks, some sometimes the kick, but like specifically the sub, I have nothing happening right here, because I don't want my sub bass to be part of that side element of the stereo width, I only want the mid to be part of it. So if you notice on a lot of like producers master chains, one part of the EQing will be basically low cutting, as I showed you before, or basically taking out those low end frequencies from the side, just so like the sub bass, for example, or the bass doesn't have the side within the full stereo width, but you still have the mid.